How could you? Honestly, Jared, I just can't with you right now. Do you have any idea what you put me through? Agony. Life was joyless with you. And I've never wanted anything more than to finally be rid of you for a single day. Not only were you unbearable to be around, but then I found out you went and cheated on me. Not to mention multiple times. And what's worse, you allowed Michael to witness it. I absolutely can't believe you. You have no idea how traumatized he was, how sick he's been feeling ever since he saw it. And you know what? Every day I wish you were dead. If there was a way, I could just guarantee that Michael would be safe from all the hardship you put him through. I just hope that someday you would get hit by a car and die. <sighs> uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean any of it. I swear, I'm just, I'm sorry. Wow, that was amazing, unbelievable, astonishing. You clearly have a deep emotional connection with your character, and your devotion to the text is certainly there. Which show did you say this monologue was from again? Um, sorry about that. I was on the phone with my ex-boyfriend. Would you like to see my audition now? I, I think we've seen enough. Next! Hi, I am Megan Starr with two R's, and I am the star of your new show. Oh, the pain! Oh, the agony! I feel as if I'm dying! I'm being decapitated! Oh, I'm on fire! I'm drowning! Fire and water? I'm transforming. I'm becoming a snake. I'm a mouse. I am a snake eating a mouse. been transformed. I have been reborn. I am human. I feel emotions, pain, joy, love. I feel love, love for you. Thank you. I look forward to hearing from you again. My God, what did I just witness? It was like a car crash in slow motion. I was just a mere spectator. That was awful, but I couldn't force myself to look away. I bet her mother made her say that stupid, cheesy line, I'm the star of your new show. Next, please. Hi, my name is Ren, and this is an original piece I call Break a Leg, Everybody. My leg! Someone please help me, the agony! I broke it! My brother just pushed me down three flights of stairs. Do you know why he did this to me? He did it because I used his toothbrush to brush the dog's teeth. How was I know he was gonna care about that? He's a dog of a person. They share water all the time. I will disown him now. That little butt cheek face. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ren. That was quite a monologue. May I ask where you got that monologue? I don't think we caught the name of the play. I wrote it myself. You wrote it yourself? 
We can definitely tell. Thank you. We will get back to you about your role in our production. This is why you don't create your own monologues, people. God, that was hell to sit through. How the hell did they write two minutes of that crap? Next. Yeah, I don't know what's, what's up with actors in agony, but every single one of them have mentioned it in their monologues. Agony is right. Ugh. Well, who's next? We don't have anyone else lined up for today. That was everyone on the schedule. You serious? <laughs> Good one. You really got me there. <laughs> No, bring in the next actor. I'm being serious. That was it. Wow. This is, that is agony. Actually, I thought we were going to have professionals coming in today, not some amateurs. I asked for the best of the best, the cream of the crop. This show was going to be my magnum opus. SM, find me better actors. We have callbacks next week. You really gotta be kidding me. What a funny profession. They walk in and out, just some normal everyday kind of people. The kind of people you'd pass on the street and not even bat an eye because you see nothing peculiar about them. Then they try to express emotion and suddenly the circus has rolled into town. I guess that makes me the clown for not, for directing these shows for however long I have been. But really, why is it so laughably bad? <laughs> Who paid these guys to come in here and recite lines from the Eric Andre show or something? I guess I better brace for impact callbacks are next week. Though I don't want to call anyone back. My livelihood depends on these shows. Let's hope I can make something of this mess. <laughs> for coming today. I'm sure you all know why you're here. You are the best of the best. So of course I walk in the theater bright and early with a fairly positive outlook on how the day would go. I mean, after all, I love kids, right? How hard is it going to be to dress a couple of five-year-olds up in a turkey costume, get them to sing a little song, and then make them line up across the stage and say what they're thankful for, right? Wrong. First, Sarah and Willie don't know their lines unless I bribe them with not one, but two juice boxes each. And even then, Willie <laughs> really refuses to get his turkey leg costume. Like, come on, kid. You're the star of the whole show. To make matters worse, little Rebecca <laughs> states that she has to go pee in the middle of the Oh, I Want a Turkey Leg song. And of course, her best friend Jasmine said to just go pee on the stage. So that's what she did. So we had to cut 30 minutes out of choreography time because they had to deep clean the stage. Safe to say today's rehearsal was just a big bust and overall she sheep show. And every minute I'm around those little boogers, I just want to bash my head in. But hey, like they say, the show must go on. Okay, people, here are your read through lines. Take a look at them briefly while I finish up on this coffee. Get warmed up and whatnot. Nia! 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 I wish for an Irish wish watch. I feel like I'm not out of bed. You talking to me? You talking to me? I don't see anybody else in here. It's a, it's a good group. Yeah. I think we've got something here. Maybe. Megan, you'll go first. Hi, I'm Megan Starr with two R's, and I am the star of the Uno show. I'm not surprised at all to be back here at Callbacks um, to the extent of my amazingness. However, there are some things we need to discuss. Um... I'm looking at the words you gave me to read, and I just don't think they show off my talents very well. 
So I put together a little something to show you how truly good I am, which is extremely amazingly, wonderfully, shockingly good. <laughs> And just so you know, I am an old man embodying a velociraptor who can do a cotton eye joe, also a mime. Thank you for enjoying my performance because I know you guys did. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Damn. Mm hmm. Thanks, everyone, for your patience. Welcome to the first day of work on Love at First Snipe. I was supposed to kill you, but now we're in love. Normally, we would start our journey together with a read-through, but I've connected with my friend Karma here about some bold new techniques to open us up as actors. So I invited them to lead us in some intense acting work today to begin our work with an artist mindset. Karma, thank you for your gift. You are so very welcome. Everyone, I'd like to begin by asking you to line up according to height. No. How tall are you in here? Arrange yourselves by your perceived intellectual height. Now! Interesting. Now, how tall are you in here? Okay, we're going to need you all to be braver. Spread out, spread out, spread out. I want you to breathe into the space below your butt. Breathe for me. Now, cry for me, cry. So true, so true. Hey man, can I talk to you for a second? Uh, no. Great. So, let me tell you about how this whole production is going. At first, I thought this was going to be it. One of my career-defining shows and whatnot, because the casting was amazing and the entire team behind this theater company is so well organized. Turns out that it isn't their motto. The first week that I walk in those doors to rehearse, I see this girl running around the place, screaming her damn head off at people like some sort of drill sergeant. Then there was this guy that was straight up asleep on the set, snoring up a storm and drooling all over. Oh! Then a few weeks of this nonsense goes by and not much changes except for the percentage above the techie heads. What's the percentage? Oh, that's just how much they have to deal with until they're fed up and decide to outburst on some poor sucker or do something irrational. So mm -hmm. the first to fill that percentage was our lighting designer. The man straight up walked out while we were rehearsing, and the director didn't even know until the end of the night. Now we have no lighting. Great situation, right? It doesn't end there. Two days later, sound team walks in. Crazy, right? Now we approach Tech Week, and most of the cast hasn't even memorized their lines, and I'm out here fully memorized. What am I supposed to do, man? Huh? 
Oh, I didn't hear anything you said. Why are you even here if you're not going to be professional? God, I hate working with actors. One second they're fine, and the next they're breaking down in a backstage janitorial closet. Like, what is with you? Can you not handle your emotions for three hours? Leave and see what your paycheck look like. I truly don't get it. Is it that hard to wrap it in a neat little present? Like, I don't care. All I know is I'm the first one in and the last one out. I work the absolute hardest and get no recognition for what I do. Being a stage manager sucks. Don't hug me, Pat. Now we cool. I just, just don't want you to hug me right now. Roll call. Kevin? He's running late. Kathy? Emergency room. Okay, um, Laura? She's having her baby. That's fantastic. I'm so happy for her. She and Steve have tried for so many years. Well, maybe I can get the kid to act for her from incubator to stage. Oh, it'll be great. Has anyone heard anything from Gina? Oh, uh, I was supposed to give you this? From County? This letter's from jail. I've always had this really bad habit of laughing when I'm not supposed to. Some people laugh with me, at me, or are extremely creeped out by me. When I was just a year just old. Here. My mom left me at home, alone, with my dad for the first time. She had a meeting out of town and my nanny, nanny wasn't available. My dad was truly the last person she wanted to leave me with. He was the definition of irresponsible. The moment my mom left, he called his friends and invited them over. They were all excited to be left alone without any interruptions from my mood killer of a mother. My dad's friends were those jocks in high school that never really grew up out of the jock in high school mindset. A few years after my parents got married and his friends came over, they began throwing a football around and it hit and went through the glass window. One thing my mom always scorned them for was throwing items in the house. And now, <laughs> oh, she was furious. She gave him a long list of don'ts and don't dares. And my dad's friends just avoided coming over unless it was the holiday because they actually wanted to have fun. So when my dad got to have the house alone to himself for the first time in a while, he saw this opportunity and took it. When they came over, the first thing they began to do was play video games. But an actor, but after an hour, they quickly got bored and decided to play football. No, 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 no. You remember the last time how she reacted once we played football in the house? She made all them rules about how we can't throw things in the house. Imagine what she'd do if she found out we did it despite her rules. There was a long silence in the house before my dad's friend Asher smirked with every ounce of deviousness in his body and looked at me. She never said we couldn't throw people. Mind you, I was the only one. My dad and his friends began playing throw and catch with my tiny underdeveloped sack of bones. And whoever dropped me would have to explain to my mom how they dropped me. I mean, they weren't bad at it either, but Asher threw me to my dad. And just as he was about to catch me, my mom came in. My dad was in so much shock, he forgot to catch me. So that's why I left uncontrollably. When my dad dropped me, he caused me to develop a neurological injury that causes me to laugh at the most inappropriate times. I've laughed at school assemblies, church, my grandfather's funeral, and even while serving on a jury. Today, I am writing to you from my jail cell because I happen to be at the wrong place the wrong time, and my intense laughter made the police believe that I was guilty of the murder. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> I cast a psychopath. Yo, I hate child actors. These little bastards want too much. At this point, I'm contemplating the vasectomy. I can't get them to show up to rehearsal unless there's pineapple pizza. You know how expensive pineapples are? Two ninety nine, two freaking ninety nine extra for some brats whose acting careers are gonna die in five years. You know who Brandon Adams is? Exactly. Only black kid on the Sandlot, and he's not even verified on Instagram. You know my sleep paralysis demon has evolved into a kid. And honestly, the Grim Reaper is less threatening. And the kid's wearing a dress. Anyway, break time's over. I gotta go order this pizza. Uh, Pat, take it from the, the top of your execution speech. My dude. When I was younger, I used to have this weird fascination with burning things. But maybe three when I developed my obsession. I don't know. I just love watching things slowly disintegrate on the face of the planet. I remember starting with things like Brussels sprouts. God, eat Brussels sprouts. And as time went on, I started burning other things that brought negativity into my life. Clothes I didn't feel like washing, dishes, dirty sheets. It honestly made life so much easier. I didn't like something, I just disposed of it with fire. First time I got in trouble with my method of happiness was in the sixth grade when my guinea pig, named Rabbit, pooped all over my room. So I decided to do what I always do. Ransack my room in order to find my favorite bedazzled lighter and once I did, I lit the hairs off my guinea pig. I was pretty satisfied with the outcome and Rabbit never bothered me again. My mom found out I was grounded for weeks. The only person who knew about my coping mechanism was my best friend Grace, and she swore an oath not to tell anyone. All throughout high school, I burned the assignments I didn't feel were necessary, simply just didn't agree with. One day, my history teacher assigned a project, and Grace and I decided to work together. The topic was the Revolutionary War, but I didn't agree with the fact that Americans won, so <laughs> I let our shy hold on fire. This really upset Grace. You can't just go around burning things, you fire freak. She said that to me. I wasn't used to such vulgar, discriminatory language. I was stunned, really. She threw her hands up in the air before whirling around and stomping off. Grace had really long hair, so her ponytail swayed side to side when she walked. And she said to me, I want it even. So I took my favorite bedazzled lighter and did the Lord's work by setting her ponytail on fire. She began screaming and rolling around on the ground trying to put the fire out while I just stood there satisfied with how I handled the situation. And Grace now had this huge bald spot in the middle of her head and well, her family pressed charges on me, of course. But I had to go to a facility for a little while and once I came back to school, I found out Grace told and everyone was calling me Lava Girl. I was curious. Never heard anyone say such mean things since, you know, Grace called me fire freak. Then conspired a plan <laughs> to burn down the school. <laughs> I was very successful, really. And today I'm writing to you from my jail cell. I've burned 266 people at animals, and today I'll face the electric chair. <laughs> I'm excited to be going out with the thing closest to fire. I think that judge secretly loved me. Pat, I love you, man. Well, everyone, that was the worst performance I have seen in all my years. I don't get it. I give you simple cues, easy lines to memorize, and chance after chance, yet here we are. So close to opening and you're still all incompetent idiots. 
And you know what? I am sick of it. I can't deal anymore. I can't deal with the disrespect, can't deal with all of you not memorizing your lines, and I certainly can't deal with the idiocy of this production. Guess what? I quit. Forget all of you. Have fun looking like a joke. I'm out. So, uh... Casey just threw up after falling down the stairs and breaking her left kneecap. She's she's fine. Don't worry. Um, um, the set is a little damaged. I'm a little upset about that. We need to learn to have more respect for our surroundings. I'm I'm not made of money. Um, I can't handle your childish attitudes to this production. Yes, we have a low budget. Yes, our stairs are made out of cardboard that did not give Casey an excuse to fall down them, even though they collapsed. No, Megan, we do not need you to fill in the role. Casey is perfectly fine and will be performing tonight. I expect better from all of you moving forward. No more excuses, no more mess ups, no more breaking things. I don't have time for your shenanigans in my production. Thank you, SM. Okay, everyone. Tonight is the night. You have to go out there and give it your all. I know you can do it. I just know you can. I'll admit, we've gone through a lot together. Poor Kathy broke her tailbone. Ronald fell off the high stage and shattered his skull. He's doing very well, by the way, and should be out of the coma by next week. Anyway, Jayla forgot all her lines and had a mild panic attack. All this to say, we've been through it all, everyone. Now get out there and break a leg. Don't actually, though, because we're already this close to a lawsuit and they think there's some foul play going on. But uh, anyway, uh, do well. <laughs> I can't believe we're just getting these horrendous costumes the day of the show. I know, right? These are so bad. They could have at least told us these costumes are gonna be this skin tight. I mean, my ankles are basically suffocating in these leggings. I literally can't even walk in this without exposing myself. What does yours look like, Megan? Well... Um, oh my gosh, did they not give you one? No, I have one. Put it on. It can't be any worse than this. <sighs> Guys, I seriously can't wear it. Like, how does he expect me to go on stage? I've never looked worse in my life. When I saw myself in this... Come on, you can't look that bad. Seriously, you guys... You guys look so amazing in your costumes, and here I am looking like Sasquatch, while you guys look like the Black Widow. I mean, at least give me something to work with. Like, why can't I just look good sometimes, or at least normal? You guys come in every day looking so good, and it's like seven in the morning. And I wake up, shower, get makeup on, all for this three hour rehearsal, and my looks don't even compare to yours. Then the director wants me to get on stage and stand next to all you guys in this big camo costume. I can't go on stage like that. I'm already taken as a joke and now I'll be an even bigger one. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you felt that way. It didn't even occur to me because I think you're really gorgeous. Same here. You come in every day so happy to work and try to uplift everyone, even if it's a long day. Right? I wish I could walk in here and be as positive as you are every day, on top of the fact that you are absolutely beautiful as well. Exactly! Your skin literally glows, and I wish mine was as smooth as yours. I've been trying to clear up my acne forever. You don't even need to get up that early and put on makeup. You're perfectly fine without it. Really. I seriously, thank you. <clears throat> I'm really happy to be doing this show with you guys. I honestly love doing this show with you guys, too. And Megan, I honestly feel so insecure, too, all the time, especially in this profession. 
Sometimes I'm too small for a role and I need to be taller or gain weight. And other times I'm too big. It doesn't make any sense, but just because you don't fit the description of some role doesn't mean you aren't absolutely beautiful. Oh my gosh, she's so right. I mean, I did this show one time and they said I had to lose 30 pounds so I could fit into the locker and jump out. I mean, you guys know how picky some directors can be, but Ren is right. A role shouldn't define your self-worth or beauty. But honestly, I look at all of you and see gorgeous, beautiful women. And if you ever need to be reminded of that, you can always come to me. Aw, thank you guys so much. I honestly appreciate it. I guess I'll go put the costume on now. The show must go on. Um, hi everyone, um, so you're all here tonight, which is a lovely, yeah, it's, it's really wonderful, glad you all could make it. So, um, I'm sure you all know what we have in store for you tonight, it's, um, it's, it's, um, the sh the show is called H Heart. H uh, no, my bad. It it's called lo Love. Loving, love. I love loving love. Yes, okay. Love. With one. With a single. With shooting people. <laughs> what? Pardon me, folks. The show is called Love at First Snipe? Yes, okay. Love at First Snipe. I, I was supposed to kill you, but now we are in love. Um. Enjoy. In a world filled with despair, death, darkness, and Domino's Pizza. These two shady assassins, hit persons, if you will, found an improbable love. I've hired Snakes McGee and Tran Crow Wiggles to assassinate each other. Either two of the most dangerous rivals in my criminal empire will fall, or they will fall in love for each other. Either way, I win. I heard a rumor you were the best. Were? I am. We'll see about that. You forgot to check behind you. Love at first night. 